Yeah. Yeah. How's everybody doing tonight? Everybody doing good? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hashtag PBT Saturday Night Live. Yeah. We got a really good show for you tonight, folks. And it's brought to you by Dr. T's Primary Care for Men. Make sure to give them a call because, uh, man, it'll be good for you. We've got testosterone. What kind of benefits can testosterone do for you? Healthy heart and blood, less fat, more muscle, stronger bones, better verbal memory, uh, better libido. Oh, yeah, and on a Saturday night, you want that libido working, papacito. Orale. Improved mood. If your wife's telling you, why are you always in a bad mood? Te falta testosterone, carnal. <laughs> All right, and uh, they also got Sir Morellin, man. I'm a personal uh, user of Sir Morellin, I'm going to lie. Increased lean body mass, fat reduction, improved energy, increased vitality, increased strength, increased endurance, accelerated wound healing, improved cardiovascular and immune function, and better sleep. Por eso que dice que dice, no, el rock and roll eléctrico, it's no drugs, it's just, you know, natural Sir Morellin in my body, daddy Oh, that's what it is. Also, they have the IV vitamin therapy, which, uh, man, it's just got so many benefits, boosts energy, helps with age management, and boy, you know, I need some of that. It reduces symptoms of migraines, helps to prevent illness, uh, also minimizes anxiety, improved athletic performance. You know where I do my athletics, daddy. And then it helps uh, in reversing symptoms of hangover. As a matter of fact, when we tocamos con mi grupo y nos bike rallies, están ambulancia y están dando los IV vitamin therapies ahí adentro de la ambulancia para los bikers que andan bien crudos. Se avientan un IV vitamin therapy y de hola, listo para entrar otra friota, papá, asustame one time. So thank you so much. Call the number on your screen and they will help you out. Dr. T's primary care for men, 956-441-2188. Asustame one time, vámonos. Y pues ya sabes, tenemos a Jaime de Anda en la música y lo tenemos aquí en vivo. Jaime de Anda, how you doing, Dad? I'm doing really good, really good. I'm excited about today. Finally, I know everybody's been waiting to see what's going to happen about the drawing and everything. So, so much news we got to give to the people today. So, I know, it's bro. exciting right now. ¿Qué has hecho, Jaime? I mean, first of all, este, ¿cómo te fue con el contest? Did you get what you were wanting out of it, brother? You know, I got the support from the fans. I got the support from a lot of kids out there also that really want to learn about the accordion. And after so many years of hearing people... You know, wanting a part of history, wanting something that, uh, uh, you know, that I love, that I cherish all my life that, as a musician. And, and to see people tell me when I'm young, man, I want that accordion. I want your accordion. Sell me your accordion one day. I, I'd like to have it. I, how can I get it one day, you know? And, and it's crazy that it took so many years to finally come up with something like this. And, and you know, talking with Julian back and forth, of course, my manager. And, and the pandemic being, in, in, you know, involved in so much time we have in our hands. And we're thinking... Well, maybe now's the time you know, to still be involved in the music or do something special for the fans. And that's why we came up with something like this. Pues tienes que improvise un poquito, Dad. Ahorita todos los músicos andan improvising, man. What's the, uh, you're still in the music scene and you're still, uh, you know, uh, I mean, it's been your life, it's been your career since you were six years old, dude. Uh, what's the, what's the uh, vibe going on right now in the industry, bro? Tell me about it. And be truthful, be honest, man, because pues, tú sabes, todos estamos en el mismo barco. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. You know, our vibes are starting to get, we're starting to get weak and scary and wondering, like, you know, are yeah. we going to be able to come back? And if we do come back, are we ready? You know, because we haven't, you know, it's really weird that, to realize that staying away from playing music and not realizing that you're going to, you know, forget some things or forget a song here or forget arrangement and not realize it because when we finally had a show not too long ago, I couldn't, we could have, well, Julia couldn't realize it and said, you know, I don't even want to tell you how many mistakes y'all made. <laughs> we already knew because we even practiced the day before like 10 to 12 hours and thought, oh yeah, we're ready, we're ready. We got on stage and you know, you still get nervous. You can't tell me you still don't get nervous going on stage, right, bro? Yeah, no, I, well, I, I mean a little bit. <laughs> you have to, right? So, I mean, it feels like it's something that, uh, man, it turned everybody's head around. You know, it made everybody just look at the world differently and, and made us all look at life. I mean, the, what we're supposed to do, so. What did you do to survive, bro? I mean, you know, the gig stopped from one day to the next, and that was your, you know, that was your bread and butter, and that was uh, the way your livelihood, that's the way you paid the bills. Bills don't stop, brother. <laughs> Believe me, How we all know that. Man? Come on, he did that. Well, you know, we're all, you know, my wife and all of us, I'm not going to lie, we all had hard times, you know, we look for... 
like I said, I understand how people say when they have two jobs, when they got to do something to make things, make in, ends meet, you know? So I did, you know, I, I started, I did mechanic with my dad for so many years. I was, uh, I went to the gas station with my uncle. I did, you know, fix flats, uh, did old crush eyes uh, and change the oils. And, and I, I learned a lot back then. I didn't realize it. Wow, I was going to have to use it again someday. You know? and, and, and I worked with a couple of friends of mine that they have mechanic shops and stuff. So I'm doing little things here and there. And sometimes we're doing an unplugged thing, you know, like I've been invited as a special guest not too long ago. Well, I think last week a couple, we went to Bryan, Texas, and we did a, an unplugged, and it was like, it was me, it was David Farias, it was Amadetta, and you know, we had, a, we had a, I think it's Mario and, and, and his guys, his Jay Pettis band, they were backing up all of us, you know. And, and, and what it was, unplugged where? What was it, it? It was in Bryan, Texas. The owner of the club was celebrating his birthday. Oh, really? Yeah, so it was. It was like a private uh, party or what? No, it was it was public. It was pretty cool. Oh, really? You know, but Bryan is a small town, and and we were wondering how is I mean how's this gonna go? We didn't even get to really practice with the guys. All they told me was assignment. Send us the list. What songs you want us to learn? You know, and, and, and that's what they got from each one of us. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought, okay, when we get there, how's it how's it gonna go? But I, I was listening to them playing, and they were you know they were backing up Ram. They were backing up their ideas. And, they were backing up uh, Mr. Um, mm -hmm. oh, uh, Marky, he was there too, and they said, and, and I thought, when I go up there, what's gonna happen? You know, I'm more conjunto, I'm more different. And, and I couldn't believe when I went up there, they go, don't worry about it, we got your back, okay? We got it, I mean, you, you don't believe how many times we've heard it? You're gonna be surprised, play, what do you got? What, which one you wanna start with? They, they got me all pumped up, okay, you know? Yeah. We did Como de Paloma, we did Yolanda, we played Pajaro Negro, and they were telling me, do the intro, everything. The drummer, he's he's you know he's with it, and I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, they they had interest, and to do something like that, that's kind of cool to do an unplugged, and to go somewhere as a special guest and, and be invited, and and I thought, well, it is going to be interesting, and to see these guys, that he goes, the drummer goes, I mean, you, you have no idea how many times I had to listen to your you know your list yeah. over and over and over <laughs> and over and over, but. But they, they did a good job, and, and we're doing stuff like that once in a while, you know. We can go to special special events and, and do unplugs. That's what we're doing to survive at this And point you were right doing now. it for the radio station here locally, too. You did something for uh, 102, right, here? Uh, you, were you doing that for other radio stations throughout the, the state uh, when they were doing these live streams? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also did Houston over there. I did one at the Verizon. Uh, an unplug we did, me and Ted, we did. Uh, I, that's pretty cool, you know. To do unplug, it really feels... There's no, you know, don't ban or something. It's really you, you know. You're gonna perform like if you're practicing at a campfire or whatever, but it's really up close with the fans and one on one, and, and they got to ask questions, and it seems more personal. And this is when you really get to see how you sound with no effects and no nothing. It's just, you know, you know, natural. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really kind of hard, but I, I, I think it's, it's, it's nice to know that the fans can feel that, you know, we'll do what we can, we'll do whatever we want to do to make to please the fans. You know that. And that's the name of the game. Oh, yeah, Daddy. When you were and Brian, with uh, uh, Ram and uh, uh, Faria, and they, did you get to talk to them, Kenny? Yeah. Star, I haven't talked to them in a while, bro. Me, me neither. I was surprised to see them, too. And um, we walked in there, and me and Julian walked in there, and I saw David, and David was like, hey, he looked at Julian. Julian, you're killing Hyman's accordion? <laughs> it's, it's, I couldn't believe you noticed that, because you know how musicians are always kidding around with each other, and he's like, yeah. hey, you, you never killed my accordion and stuff like that, all picking, but that's how we broke the ice and saying hello and everybody, and, yeah. and then we started talking to Ram too, Ram's like, man, I just want to hurry up, get up there, and I'm going to sing a couple songs, and I want to go home. He went up there, he sang like 10 or 15 songs, so I'm going to get three or four songs, and we were there waiting and waiting, but everybody was cool, because it felt good to see everybody again. And, and well, that's interesting good. that Ram said that, I mean, uh, knowing that they haven't been out there in a while, I would imagine, man, once you get on stage, you want to be, you know, you're looking forward to seeing it, but I guess after doing it for so many years... He sounded great, he sounded yeah, good, he yeah. still has it, you know, he still got it, David is too, everybody. It's, it's nice to know that we can all get along still, you know, work together and do things like this, because... It's for the fans also, you know, it's important to see the fans, see us communicating, see us getting along and, you know, that's what it's all about. I know even though we have hard times with other bands and we, you know, it's hard to work with some other bands and, and but that, it's always going to happen, it's always going to happen because people don't know or realize what's going on behind the scenes, only what they hear. So it's pretty tough right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, don't go away because coming up in a little while, we're going to give away the uh, awesome accordion. You know, we're doing a contest for the longest time. It took a while, and we got some uh, numbers sold, and somebody's going to win 
Jaime Dianda's beautiful black accordion. He's going to autograph it here tonight, and we're going to pick a winner out of so many numbers that were bought, man. And the accordion, if you see it on your screen there, man, it is one beautiful machine, man. This thing is one of a kind. It's been played by one of the best, and it's going to be somebody's, all right? Somebody's going to take it home, uh, and they're going to have it there. And let me tell you, nobody else is going to have it but that person. And we want to thank everybody that bought numbers and bought tickets for this uh, awesome uh, program, this awesome contest. And Jaime Dianda, you know, he's not one that would really uh, want to, uh, you know, uh, cut ties with one of his most beloved possessions. But you know what? It's for the fans, and uh, I think it was a perfect opportunity to do it with this COVID thing going on. And so somebody's going to be really lucky out there. Like I see, Jaime. That's right. That's right. Not only that, the winner's going to get some... Uh, and, you know, some accordion lessons also I'm going to throw in oh, really? with the winner. So oh, hopefully, really? hopefully the person that wins is not a professional accordion player. He's going to be like, I don't need no lessons. No lessons. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I was also going to ask you, you know, you were talking about yeah, getting together with uh, Ram and those guys. And, you know, everybody got along really well. What's the status with the dude from your former band, bro? Is there still some uh, some, some shit going on with that, or is it uh, you know just you, you know I know there's some things well, you can't talk about, sure, sure, sure. but you know uh, is is there still some I, ongoing thing going on with that? Or are you going to be able to get that name back? Are you not? Well, I mean, what's the deal with that? Well, people are well, people are always wondering about that, bro. You know, and a lot of fans still today don't even know what's going on and don't realize that. I get some, sometimes we get some inboxes. Hey, you you not what you, you're on your own and. It's like, you know, not everybody's up with Facebook also. And yeah. a lot of fans are not following us. You know, and not everything on Facebook is true. Exactly. <laughs> I was about to say that. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I mean, hey, I'm see, like, on Facebook is better than I can have. That's right. Yeah. I, I like that because my mom says, oh, I said, Facebook, put a cheese man, put a cheese man. Yeah. And my sister's on there saying, did you know that Jaime's over here? What's going on? What's going on? And okay, mom, I thought it's cheese man. What do you want to know? Hey, not even on Facebook, on YouTube, on our previous shows. I mean, the co the comment section was crazy, bro. I mean, back and forth, and it was like, there was some animosity going on right there. Have they all kind of chilled out and cooled off and just said, you know what, let's just move forward? Or is there still some litigation going on with this, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, what is well, it that they want, dude? I don't understand. <laughs> well, you know, it's 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 like when you um, go to a bank and you do something and, and, and you get a loan or whatever, and, and you use your company as collateral. Okay. But when you pay the note and you did your you did your dues, you pay your dues and everything else, and... And, you know, hey, when, when these guys turned their backs on you and everybody thought, no, hey, it's ours, so we're going to keep it, man. Let's see what happens. Uh -huh. So that's when everything really changed. Right? Yeah. That's when everything fell apart. And, and at the same time, you know, I got to really study things and look at it. Because Junior was telling me, look, Jaime, get out of the circle. I want you to look at your videos. I want you to look at everything you've done in the past. I want you to look, listen to your, look at your shows. Listen to your music. Look to, to the recording of what you've done and what's going on at the moment right now. So... If you really look at everything, you're going to realize, you know, how much you, you know, what you do. You ask me, what do you think, you know? And I started watching and watching and, and listening and watching. And, and then comparing to what I'm doing now, I thought, wow, I was letting my fans down. I felt like I wasn't doing justice anymore. I felt like these guys were, were really, like, whatever, it's like a routine. Uh, we, we didn't practice, we didn't do anything. It would seem like it's just another day, you know. Every weekend, just go up there and play, give, give me a list, play a song, do this. And, and the recordings, too, you know, it seemed like they were getting more, less than just whatever. It was just going in and play this song or record this song. It was you know. routine. Yeah, more more routine. And and, and to, to, to feel that and realize it, I felt pretty bad. I felt pretty bad looking and thinking, wow, that's not, that's not, do you that's want not the, why I got involved. Do you want the name back, hey, man? Well, you know, it's my family tradition name, of course. You know, I started it with my dad and mom. They were the managers. They started the name. It was from them. My mom was always asking me what's going to happen, what's going on. Of course, because of the COVID and everything's happening, court is pending right now until we find out what's going to happen. Uh -huh. But I want to let fans know out there, yes, I am on my own. It is Jaime the under JDA. People don't know and understand what's happened, why it happened, and what's going on. And the, important, the most important thing is... I wouldn't leave my band for any reason, dumb or crazy or wrong. They have to realize who is going to accept something when you, uh, when, if you own something and someone pays, or you, know, you pay the debt back, whatever happens, however it happens, and and you got all these people thinking, oh, no, no, boy, you know, the person that they paid for the company, it belongs to him. 
well, that, that's my name for so many years. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight for it because I'm in the right. And things the way it happened, maybe shouldn't happen that way. But however it happened, it happened for a reason. It happened for the best. Because I'm a lot happier now. I feel better now playing. I'm on stage, I'm in charge again. I feel like it's me. I feel like I get to entertain the people. I mean, give them what I want to play and, and, and be in the studio and, and get excited on stage. And, and all that means a lot because I was losing that feeling, not realizing it. So yes, it's important. One, it's important because the name belongs to me. The name I started it. And, and you know, until we find out the results, I, I, I hate the fact that, you know, so many haters out there real quick to judge and, and say this and, and uh, you know, and they're, they're picking on my wife, they're picking on me, when they pick on the family and all that, I'm thinking, fans are crazy because I love the way they like to tell us, it's all musicians, what to do, what to decide, yeah. what you should do. <laughs> you need to go back to the over there. You don't stop. <laughs> you need to not do that. You shouldn't record here. You know, I'm like, wow, what, what? It's Tos, like me asking them, what do you do? Tosque <laughs> Correl Show. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And yeah. Hey, we all have, a, we all make our own decisions. Well, you know, I mean, that, that name Chamacos has been around since you, Raul, and, and, and your dad. I mean, it's been a long time. Um, but what are the chances of you, what are the, your attorneys saying, man? Is there a chance that you might be able to get that name back? Or is, or is it just, do they tell you, you know what, just kiss that name goodbye or what, man? What? What is your feeling? Do you feel that you will one day have that name back or no? I do. I do. And and no matter what happens, I feel like, you know, I, I I deserve to have what belongs to me and I deserve to have what I started with and and fight for what I believe in that I did my right and you know, of course. And it's crazy because in court things can change, of course. They can go the other way, who knows what. And that's why a lot of times we you know, we wanna do things uh, however we can to make the fans and family, because sometimes some of my families are confused and, and thinking, oh, how could you let the name go? You didn't care about it, this and that. They're, you know, they're quick to jump the gun and not realize. And then people are like, oh, well, you had all this child support, you had all these bills, all this. And they don't realize that, you know, if I took care of myself first, I wouldn't be indebted. If I paid myself first, I'd have a new car. If I took care of myself, I'd have a new house. I'd have everything. But we do what everybody else thinks. A businessman thinks what? You have to have a company. You gotta take care of your employees or else you don't have a company. Mm -hmm. So I took care of everybody. And there's no way that any, anybody or any of them can say they weren't happy. Why would you be here 25 years? Why would you stick it out? Right. If I wasn't a good boss, if exactly. I could take care of you, if I didn't feed you, if I didn't do everything, if I didn't pay y'all first, why would you still be here? And then bands, musicians are always coming and going. You guys were always a complete complaining. unit for a long time. The only one that really kind of changed quite a bit was a drummer. You know, that's it. But as far as the top three front guys, yeah, yeah. you guys were together for a long time, since the 90s. Exactly. And uh, so it was pretty pretty shocking when all that went down. Man. That's why fans were going crazy and this and that, and, th you know, judging and quick to say, oh, well, they didn't do... You know, you can sit here and point the finger and, and, and have all kinds of reasons, but if you're not in the circle, and if you don't know what's going on, if you haven't been a boss man yourself and take responsibility in the right direction, you don't know what it is to run a business. Well, it's like in Facebook. Everybody fails. In everybody Facebook, makes it. everybody has a degree, bro. You know what I mean? It's a degree. on what they're writing. Let me sacar mi degree de abogado. Let me sacar mi degree de politica. Let me sacar mi degree de business. Let me sacar. Todos tienen degrees, Vato. And they know your personal life. <laughs> They know everything about you. Oh, they're talking about your family. Oh, you don't know. You don't do this. You don't do that. Yeah, yeah. What about you guys? Those, I mean, those on counselors. There you go. <laughs> real quick, real quick. Hey, man, man, Facebook is full of them, bro. I mean, you know what I mean? You know, we, we, we all have our own mistakes. We all, no one's perfect. No one can say that they enjoy doing what they're doing because if you're not happy, whatever, then do make a move, make a change. Yeah. Because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to make a change in life for the better. And if you don't, then that's why you're going to be stuck where you're at. And for, that's why I get tired of everybody thinking, oh, well, he must have not taken care of these guys, or maybe if he paid this and this and that, maybe he would have had better. No, you know what? Maybe I should have taken, taken care of myself. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should have done this a long time ago. Maybe, maybe I would have been better off doing what I, what I love to do back then. Yeah. And enjoying it instead of saying, wow, you know, I need to take care of these people. I need to take care of these guys. I need to get my hotel room. I need to pay their meals. I need to make sure I got paid. If, uh -huh. hey, you know how it is. I need to put and, gas in the Winnipeg. I need to put <laughs> gas in the vehicles. We need to go and, you know, buy what? some some suits. We need to buy some exactly. we need to We need to buy some equipment. What happened when nobody shows up at the club? Yeah. 
they they're still worth the pay. Mm -hmm. They don't care how many people what came in. Hey, like you know, we did our we did our two hours. You know, yeah. what does that pay? Nobody understands the responsibility it takes to. It's run a huge, dude. Being in a band is. You know, and then you're. Everybody the wants to be a boss, but not pay. And you're at the mercy because being in a, a musician in the band is one of those things where you can actually, you know, party on the job. You know, <laughs> and, and so it, it, everything's kind of unstable. You know, I've been in bands for a long time, and I was always in the back of my mind. I hope the music, I hope the guitar player shows up, and y de repente no llegas y tienes que hacer algo, y pues you're the one that... Like, and, and they don't, you hope they don't show up drunk, and all that, everything's important. Yeah. You don't realize it. And because, you know, even though it's a party, it's not really our party. No. We're there to entertain. We're yeah. there to look professional. You're going to look professional however you look on stage. And if you want to be considered a professional musician, then act like one. I had a guy that I hired for guitar, and uh, and he was, uh, you know, he was known to, you know, borrear, vato. Con eso está el tronco, ¿entiendes? And uh, he had a job at, at a restaurant, right? So when he came in, you know, I asked him, "Hey, look, dude, we're gonna I need a we need a guitar player, but Akira, we don't drink, bro. We just we perform." And I asked him, "You work over there at that place, right? Yeah. Uh, do you get do you go drunk? No. Do you drink there and get drunk? No. Uh, do you ever you know go hung over there? No. Well, this is that place. There you go. You know." It's and, a business, it's and still. you know, and he joined us, and he was good for a while, and then he went right back to you know being a musician, playing, and because the thing about being a musician as well, if you like to drink, you like to do drugs or whatever, uh, you play at at venues that uh, supply that stuff. <laughs> 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 well, the fans, if you're like the fans in the same way, well, who's who's making sense? You it's know? it's like a diabetic working at a bakery, dude. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? You, you know, you might end up eating one of those pan dulces sooner or later. And it's even though you know it'll fuck you up. You know what I mean? And but we, it's just it's a tough thing. And, and you know, it's really crazy that you say that because you know we had our own meetings. You know, Julian said the same thing. You know, guys, I want you up there sober. I want you up there and see. What can you do? I mean, what can you bring to the table as a person? Sure, everybody likes to, oh, well, you know, I need to calm my nerves down. And we all think that. We all think, oh, I don't know if I, I, need, a, I need a shot before I go on stage. Well, una vironguita, una, yeah, just one, one, hay two. Hay unos que sí se vientan una little... Uh, six pack. Oh, yeah, oh, no, más o menos una tequila shot. Pero hay otros que se dejan caer toda la botella, carnal. <laughs> Because you know we grew up that way, thinking that that's what we needed to do to, yeah. do, to be to go on stage to have that. Oh, I don't want to be nervous. This Dude, yeah. But you know we, we've got it so many times now that I realized myself that you know what I don't have to drink to go on stage. I might be a little nervous, but I feel that if I make a mistake, at least I made an honest mistake. Not I never saw because. you guys wasted on stage, dude, or anything. So I, I, I mean, you guys were professionals, and uh, you know, you, and, uh, and you have to do those moves together. You, yeah, should, you know, yeah. those, those dance moves. So uh, you obviously I mean, do a lot of dancing, a lot of spinning, and stuff like yeah. that. It takes, it, it does. It takes yeah. a lot of coordination. There is a time and a place for everything. I mean, if you want to party somewhere when you're not performing, that's fine. But if you're partying on stage. That's 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 detrimental to the business, and that's also disrespectful to the fans. Exactly, you know, period. And that's what a lot of musicians need to realize. But usually, the head of the of the, of the band, you know, we're like uh, we have that because we're the ones that are going to have to go talk to the bosses of the clubs and all that. If anything can happen, that's another wrong. thing. You see, that's I used to tell thing. those guys, my guys, I used to tell them, hey. Si ustedes caen el palo, te van a llegar a mi carnal. Y igual que no me lleguen a mi casa tuya, bro. You know what I mean? It, it's, so. it's just like I would say too. You know, when 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 the boss man or when I would tell the guys or anybody say, look, I need you here at twelve o'clock, okay? If you're gonna get there at one one thirty two, oh, you know, I, I, I have flat tire or or you know, I ran out of gas or all <laughs> kinds of excuses. I says, look, I understand if it's real and show me proof because if you guys are late with me. I, it's time to start docking pay. Start to show you that this is a company. Yeah, because why? Oh, I know they get mad, <laughs> but but, if you, but the, what they don't realize is, look, if I show up late to a wedding and I get docked by the people that hire us because you guys were late when I tell y'all to show up, is that fair? They have to with pain and suffering, what the stress, what the Exactly, but not only that, what would they do to the private? Sometimes the private's like, hey, well, so you, you're 30 minutes late, I would late on stage, hey. and they can knock off $500, $1,000, that's a big hit. Oh, yeah. 
Look here. And yeah. these guys can be thinking, oh, well, you know, well, I'm here, I made it, this and that. Yeah, but now we got to go on stage. Now we got to do sound check. Well, we do sound check because why? It's important to make sure everything's working. Yes, sir. It's Technical problems can still happen, but we still check things. Yeah. Better than running on stage and just, hey, bound or whatever, whatever happens, how it sounds. That's the reputation you want to have? No. You want to be respected? Show respect. Show up early. Care about your job. Care about sh showing the fans that you you care about giving them a good show. Because when they pay, to, like the, all of us, if we pay to go see a band perform, I don't care the rock and roll bands how they are and how this and that. They don't make mistakes. They sound professional on stage. You hear their production perfect. And they you use, hear the light show. You see it. And they use playback a lot too. <laughs> those big rock bands. No, you all play live, bro. <laughs> well, see, I didn't know that, but yeah. but a lot of times, you know. What they're doing is, is, but look at the production that they come up with. You know, look where they're at. Look at the level that they're in. And we all want to be there. Yeah. And how do we, how do we get there? We gotta, you gotta earn the stripes. You gotta show you care. All the, the promoters out there are looking for bands that care also, because the promoters are talking to clubs, they're talking to venues, and if they don't do a good job and hire the right bands, you're not gonna get called again. And there's so many bands out there, man, that oh, they can today, pick. Today, you know. And that's everybody's like, it's oh, so I'll go right now. Uh, yes. And that's where the music is in the live shows now, bro. Because music, as far as CD sales, that's a thing of the past, bro. Yeah. And as far as streaming is concerned, man, you're lucky if you get a hundred bucks a month with that shit. So you know, it's very yes. important that you go and you perform. You leave a good, uh, a good impression, right. and good enough to be called back again, and to maybe get five gigs that year at that same venue, and then you can start moving around. And then before you know it, you got every weekend booked in different areas and you're coming back and people are showing up because when they get there, they're gonna, they expect to see a perfect show like the one they had when the first time they went. And, you, and know? You, you know what a lot of us musicians don't realize, and I've, I've told them, you know, it's important when we're, in, when we're on stage, where we go play. Because every time you go play somewhere, you don't know who's out there. You don't know who's thinking about hiring you for a quinceanera, for a wedding. Anything, yeah. everyone, there's someone out there that's listening, no matter what, there's going to be someone out there listening and paying attention that night. And what if that's the night that you think, oh, you know, it's just another club and, you know, I, you know, I can have a couple of drinks, I'm, I'm all right, but, but you're making mistakes, you're making up words and you think it's all right, or because the fans are drunk too, not every fan's drinking, I guarantee you. There's somebody out there that's watching. And that's they're listening. all recording. Oh, that's, just, that's the bad part. You can't they're hide all now. got their phones up recording <laughs> you, dude. Yeah. You know, so ahora con más ganas, watch us on this madre en una band y salen y todo lo hacen share y todo lo watching. Y van a ir, no, mira la cara. And that's why. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and that's why if, if you are all on your four senses and stuff, you do your best job. If you make an honest mistake because you were on your four senses and you care about your job, okay, then you know it's acceptable. But if you if you're you know not drunk or anything and you still making mistakes like you're not paying attention or you don't care, then that's another thing too. But then then you're showing lack of respect for the music and for the people that paid to come in the door, because that's what we that's what that's happening to all the bands now. Mm -hmm. Come on, how do we make our money? How do promoters make money? How do clubs make money? It's the door. How uh, how do you feel about your band members right now, man? Why don't you send them a shout out so we can? Heck yeah, you know I I got some tremendous guys right now. You know Ted Ted. Real love was on the bajo. He's, he's a monster. He's crazy. I didn't know he had so much talent, hidden talent and stuff. And he's great. I got Jorge on Jorge Ariano on the drums, and you know it, 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 it's it's got the beat. He, he, they love the challenge. They like the old school stuff, and you know that's what I want. You know things like that. Jorge Ariano's played with a lot of big bands. He was with he, Los Fugitivos. Yes. Uh, he played locally here with a band called Bucking Crazy. Yeah. And the guy yes. was, he's an amazing uh, El Mohawk. I don't know. He stands <laughs> out, bro. Tuvo yeah. un signo también un rato, yeah. No, también, yeah. yeah. So you know that's good to, to know that these guys done this. They done the. Who do you have on bass? And, and bass right now, of course. Uh, I call him Bad Boy Carlos. I hear Carlos Gonzalez. Oh, yeah. Simon and the Bad Boys. But it's crazy because, you know, he he surprises all of us. You know, I didn't think he could dance or he would want to learn how to dance or or, or, or pay attention. And everybody's like, oh, he's not going to last. I love this. Everybody knows everybody. You know, like they always say, everybody yeah. knows everybody. But I tell you what, man, when we go on stage, they all know we have our little meetings inside the RV and Julian's talking to us and say, all right, guys, let's get ready. we got so much minutes. Okay, what's the that. list? What's the lineup? What's going to start first? What are you going to do first? Who's, who's going to do this? And then, awesome. and then the lady's like, okay, I have a, don't wear that shirt. That's not the right shirt. Or, or you know, <laughs> fix your hair or something, you know, but it's, it's, it's a job. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's direction, it's direction, it's leadership. Yes. yes. I mean, I love, that's the part I love about the, the band, too, is 
and we get together and we, we plan out what we're going to do on stage and that's, we go on stage and it's executed yes. and that's the best feeling in the world bro that's when you know that you know it was a heck of a night because everybody was on the same team, yeah. same page. Everybody was cooperating. Everybody knew where everybody was going. And believe me, chemistry. Eric, and you know, everybody has a different mind, especially when it's time to eat. Oh, I want Popeyes. Well, I want uh, pizza. <laughs> I want this. Yeah. You know, it's always hard to, to you know, it, that's, everybody has a different mind, you know. And, and the hardest thing is when you go in the studio or when you're practicing and want to do something different for the show, and everybody has an opinion. And, and I see it as, I wanted to hear everybody's opinion. But remember, there's also one director that's going to say the final say-so. And that's how it's supposed to be, no matter what you do. You can bring anything to the table. Yes, it can be used, may not be used. May be right, may not be right. Nobody should be offended about anything that's being said, because why? It's JDA. It's my game. It's my show. It's going to be this way, because why? I want it to be something now. Now, these guys are doing a great job following and they're understanding that it is a job. Be, they're, they're, they're not here. Nobody plays it free or benefit. We understand. Everybody's, besides that, dude, you everybody's have important. all that experience behind you. You know, I mean, who wouldn't want to, you know, take advice from you, dude? I mean, you know what? I mean, if I'm in a band with you and you're coming up and you're telling us what we need to do, okay, that's what we need to do because this guy's been doing it since he was six years old. I think he knows and he's still around and he's been consistent and he was part of the huge, the biggest era in Tejano music in the 90s. And he's, and that's, that's doing progressive conjunto and doing the, his own thing. You know, he wasn't doing the, Tejano thing, the, the typical Tejano sound. You were doing something else. Even before the 90s, when you had Mando and when you, I mean, uh, 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 yeah, and uh, Juan Manuel, P. and Juan P. and those guys, you were, you were way ahead of the, of, of the tide, bro. You know, a, a lot of controversy you, know, you hear today, too, is going on back and forth. I wasn't the first one to dance with the accordion, this and that. Hey, you know, I get credit where credit is due, I understand. I remember Mingo Saliva seeing him dance with the accordion. Hey, when I saw him doing something with accordion, that was another thing I would admire because I listened to everybody. I had to listen to Tony Rosa, Mingo Saldiva, Paulina Bernal, Juan Villarreal, man, when I heard Steve Jordan, another, you know, amazing accordion player. Everybody had their own thing. Everybody had their own style, had their signature. Okay, Mingo was one of the first persons to dance his way. What did I do with dancing? I love to dance on the dance floor. I dance with my sisters and my cousins and stuff, and I love to dance like crazy. So. I added a lot to the dancing with the accordion. I just, I spin, I dance, I dance with bongos, I, I do all kinds of things. I just took it to another level. Cause you know, you got all this, oh, you weren't the first person to dance with the accordion, this and that. It's funny here that, you know, the haters always say yeah, yeah. some kind of comment, but always trying to correct people when they can't do it themselves. They just want to, and they just, they just want to tell you how much they know as well. They want to show you that they know también, but yeah, yeah. but not only in the music, as far as the dancing is concerned, the music, like when you did uh, with Juan P, with Un Complejo, the double bass, uh, Manuel, he didn't have a double bass, drums was, you know, he had a single pedal, he had a single pedal and he would like triple, yeah. triple hit it. And that was not, that wasn't seen a lot with the musicians back then and the drums. The only guy that I remember that played similar like that was the guy that played with Bobby Naranjo y Grupo Dirección. Oh, like on, man, ¿Por qué será que yeah. que I used to go watch him live, The too, drums man. were freaking amazing on that. I don't he know what his name. He was perfect, man. He's but, long hair, too. Somebody told me his name. I think Ted knows who he is, too. But when, but I, would awesome, hear, man. Yeah, awesome. when I would hear Manuel, I, that's, that's, what, that's what I would be reminded of, man, back yeah. then, you know. Man, they, they were, uh, they, you know, musicians are amazing, but what the hardest thing to do is... Is to stay in that level, you know. Where do you want to go as a musician? What do you want to be as a musician? What do you want to be recognized as a musician? Because so many people out there, so many bands, like you said today, it's so easy now to find so many accordion players, so many bajo players. Back then, we had we hardly had any choices. It was limited because we were the youngest first conjunto to do something like that. Kids didn't play conjunto. They didn't listen to the accordion. They didn't, you know, that's grandpa music and stuff like that. Yeah. I listened to it, I stuck to it, I followed my dad for so many years. Not realizing that it was going to be a career out of it, I was going to make it. And not realizing how important it is to learn an instrument, and it's very hard to learn. It is, it takes practice, it takes hours, it takes, I mean, you got to really yeah. study. Mm -hmm. And then, when I was following everybody, only one man told me, you know, Mr. Tony Arosa said, you know what, excuse me. He goes, I know, you can really play the accordion, but lo que te falta es tu propio estilo. And I said, wow, ¿cómo, cómo le hago? Pues no te puedo decir, pero un día lo vas a ver, lo vas a escuchar. It's going to come out, man. 
And I could not believe it. I, I went home that day. I remember we were in Houston. I don't know when I finally got to meet all of us. I was amazed to watch him play too. But I went home thinking and thinking, and what? I, I couldn't get it. I never. I didn't understand how, where. Your signature. Yeah, your signature and your music. When they hear you play, mm -hmm. they're going to know it's you. And, and Right from the get-go. Man, and, and, and I can't believe it that I was at a restaurant one day, and, and these fans were there, and they didn't know, I guess they didn't know I was there. And they became, they were playing music, and, and my song came out, and, and you could hear it go, listen, listen, to, listen to the recording. And it, I guess it's telling his dad, these kids were, yeah, listen, that's Hyman. Yeah, listen to his style of recording. I'm listening and thinking, what? I have a signature now? <laughs> you yeah. Know? You can recognize it, you know? And, and it's crazy because he was right. Tony was right. You want to be recognized, but you want to be also recognized for your own style. Yeah. You're going to find it, but I can't tell you how. But it's true. You hear back then. You heard the Rambella. You heard Don Ross. You yeah, knew right everybody. Uh -huh. You knew who they were. Dos Hilbertos. Dos Hilbertos. Yeah. yeah. You know, but you know everybody. You know, you hear them. And today, well, you know, there's so many musicians today. But don't get lazy. Make yeah. your own thing. Do yeah. your own thing. Or you Dance your own steps. What happens is you emulate all your uh, idols, and then all of a sudden you put all those idols together to form your own signature sound, and that's what happened. And speaking mm -hmm. of signature sounds in the accordion, and you know somebody's going to win this accordion tonight, man, and it is just absolutely amazing. This accordion is a Gavanelli. Tell us a little bit about the accordion, Hyman, man. This is a this is a thing that should be in a museum, bro. <laughs> you know, it was a hard decision to make, of course, and. and what's going on with the COVID and stuff. We had to, you know, do something and to help out. And, and it is, you know, it's for good cause also. Yeah. We want to, I want to say that it's a beautiful accordion. I, when you buy an accordion, there's so much to know about it. I didn't realize it when I was growing up. I was, I was 12, 13 years old, going to Mr. John Gabinelli's house and, and watching him, how he would tune the accordions and, and what sound he was giving them. And, and how he tuned them, and, and, and I, didn't, I was trying to recognize that, but I didn't realize how important this instrument can make you feel when you learn it, when you have it, when you're holding it, when you're playing it, when you're, when you're creating, when you're learning polkas and you're doing something, and you're, you're playing from your heart. And to me, the accordion is one of the hardest things and the most beautiful thing, instrument to learn. And, and, and doing something like this for a fan, finally, that someone's gonna get their win and have this accordion is tuned the way I like it. It's an FPE, it's a flat accordion, it's a three switch. Uh, the the uh, vibration on it is, everybody can recognize how I, I, mean, I didn't even know that I had my own style the way I, uh, I asked for my accordions to be tuned because they're tuned differently. You have a lot of vibration, less vibration, and all these things. So right now, someone's gonna be very lucky to know what it feels like to, to play something, to have something that's been a part of me that I've used on studio. I've used it in the studio. My last single right now, Pequeni y Fragil, y No Me Olvidado, in the studio, I use it there. I've done it on several, so many uh, live shows that I've done also in the past. So I'm going to be excited to know who is going to really win the accordion. Yeah. I'm excited too. I'm, I don't even know. Well, let's do it, man. We've got to <laughs> Are you do ready? Uh, yeah, oh, let's man. do it, man. Let's do it. We've got the little, uh, I guess, uh, lottery thing here. This lottery, what would you call this, babe? We got, we got uh, hashtag MT producer rally. <laughs> we should have put a microphone on you so you can give us the number. It's okay. Uh, maybe you can hook one up real quick. Hook it's up. a bingo cage. Yeah, there's a there's a yeah. microphone there right there, babe. And that is what it's all. And there, there's a little connector right over here. We're live, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, if you got any questions or you want to make any comments, and plus we have the super chat. If you want to throw in some money, if you like the show, thanks a lot. We appreciate it. There's the plug right there, baby, if you want to get it. And, um, okay, so. This is going to be interesting, though. Very interesting. Yeah, because uh, these little balls, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I can read the numbers <laughs> on there without my reading glasses. My uh, beautiful wife, she has 20-20 vision. And that was the purpose, you know. That was, you can't say, oh, you, you know, you see these big numbers, you don't know what you're going to pick. No, you can't even, you don't even know which number you're going to pick. So how many <laughs> little balls do we have in this thing? This is supposed to have uh, 100 and... It's 100, about 175 or 80. Yeah. We're trying to remember. We took almost 200. Over, almost 200. Yeah, so, we almost yeah. hit the whole... Almost you almost sold all 200. Yes, all right. And, you know, a lot of fans also were asking, why so long? You know, why take... You know, look how many months it, it's been dragging this and that. <laughs> you know, it's it's at the same time. You know, a lot of fans were asking. You know, I I I want to get I want to get in the drawing, but I need some time here. I'm you know I'm, to make extra money here. I want to send this and that. So 
we, we figured, you know, let's give people a chance. You know, we know what's going on right now. We yeah. know how times are right now. No, that's good, so, man. Hey, don't. Hey, we're here today. Yeah, that's going to happen. Today, that's all it's that gonna matters, happen. brother. Tonight. Test, test, uh, test your mic. Hello? Phone. Hello? Check one, two. Okay. One, two. Hold on a second. One, two. It might be over here. Hold on, hold on. Figure it out. Follow that little cable over there, baby. All right. Let me put some music here while we do it. All right. <clears throat> Test it out. Well, turn on the mic. There it is. One, two? Yeah. One, two? <laughs> it had an on switch. Hello. All right. Are you there, baby? Yes, I'm here. Hello. One, two, three. Okay. All right. So, um, we're going to. So, how are we going to do this? We're going to. We're gonna shake it up and then bring out what is it? Uh, you wanted to do ten, right? Well, what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna take out fifty numbers. Okay. Those fifty numbers we're gonna put in a basket because those fifty numbers are gonna be the numbers that we're gonna uh, uh, pick from. You know, by we're gonna do ten less and then be forty and then ten will be thirty and okay. You know, we're, that's what we're gonna do. So out of the two hundred, almost two hundred. We're going to take out 50 numbers okay. that are going to continue to find out who's going to be the winner. All right, so we're going to put out 50 little balls out. Right? Oh, shit. How does this work again? Here, <laughs> here, Mama. Where can we... Uh, it's right there? here. Oh, there's a bucket. Okay. All right. There you go. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> hold on. Hold on. How's this thing working? <laughs> <laughs> that was the interesting part, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, I mean, so I, this I is, you do it this way. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Wait. Oh, there it is. Yes, and then you go, and it comes out here. Ah, uh, Como quiera, lo voy a mandar a la fregada, chico. Look, you haven't been to, you haven't been to bingo, come on. Yeah, all right. So then like this, right? Do it slowly, yeah. yeah. It's going to catch a okay. ball. And I, 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 how many do we have, baby? Um, three. three so do six, ten. Yeah. Six, seven. seven eight. Eight. eight, 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 uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, there There's there you go. 12. 13. 13. <laughs> 13. Uh, yeah. You know what the fans have an opportunity to think. You know, it's not going to just be one number. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Hey, also, I'm letting the fans know that we're going to have three prizes, okay? First place, second place, and third place. 19. There it is right there. Where? Right underneath. Uh, okay. Oh. So, 120. There's one underneath by the, by the wheel over there. Over there? A couple of wheel people. So Hold on. We're going to have, yeah. Hold we're going to do, you know. Okay. Hold right on. Why don't I just stick my hand in there and pull no, the hold on. <laughs> I didn't yeah. want to do it, but people won't think, oh, I was going to pick the number now. Where did you see that little ball? It was further than, right in the middle somewhere. Did you get that? This thing was messed up. What's that? Oh, yeah. 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 Chingao, se vio saliendo 24, 25. There you go. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, if those people numbers in there, we're going to pull out 49. Oh, yeah. Oh. 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 Four, five, six. 
10, okay? So there's 10, let me throw them in there. There you go. <laughs> All right. How much is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and then five more. So what are you buying? Yeah. Okay. Hold what on. Are you buying? Five more. Okay, five more. One. <laughs> Two, three. It said I do it too fast, I think. Uh -huh. No, I don't. <laughs> Four. One more. Like that. Okay, now we're going to take all these out, out of there. Right. So whatever numbers are in here left are no longer valid. So how, who's going to pull these, throw these out? I have to let it go. The person that takes care of... She's uh, had your back, bro, big time, bro. I know, and puts up with a lot. And, <laughs> yeah, besides the haters and, you know... You know well, you know, they, they are. They, they are rock. They do everything. I mean, they take a lot and they put up with a lot. And you know what? We're hard-headed. And, and so we always, we're always right even when we're wrong. No, you can say that. Right. Those are the two golden rules. Rule number one, I'm always right. Right. Rule number two, if I'm wrong, look at rule number one. Okay? <laughs> there you go. That's all. I like that. Okay. Wait. So now we're going to put the ones that are left, the 50. And out of the 50, how many are we going to pull out? I'm going to take out 10. Okay, all right. We're getting close, ladies and gentlemen. So We just want to make it interesting and make fans so they have more of an opportunity mm -hmm. to, to do something very special. Right? Um, it's, um, it's yeah, the first time we've ever done something like this also with the bingo. Put them right here. You want you should we call the numbers to the bingo right there? So people can hear? Oh yeah. yeah no, 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 no. No blip. Is it is it here longer? Yeah, no, we can't. Yeah, when people that have an idea. Well, yeah, yeah. When well, we we'll do the ten then, but fifty is on chino. Was that people like they answer this? Yeah, you're still here. Oh no, when well, we get the ten, those are when we start calling out the numbers. Right? Okay. So now right now it's still a secret, nobody knows nothing. But we forgot to say the numbers are the hundred and eighty. <laughs> so right now it's still a secret. Nobody knows what if they're still in or not. So that's that's kind of an idea too. That's a good point because nobody knows oh I'm out. No, am I out or yeah, no? Yeah. Am I still in or not? That's true. Yeah, they don't get to hear this real early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're right. Alright, here we go. We're gonna pick ten out of these. Right. These are the 50 that were picked out of the 180 some. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna pick 10. Eliminate 10. One. Eliminate 10. Eliminate, right? Yes. Right, okay. Eliminate 10. What do you mean el eliminate? Because we're taking out 10. Okay, and then what are we gonna do with those 10? They're gonna be eliminated because remember we started with 50? We're gonna take out 10 and be 40 left. You're gonna take out another 10 and be 30 left. That's what oh, we're okay. doing. Okay. We're gonna go down to We have the 7 left, right? Oh, I thought we were going to pick out 10 and then throw the ones that are in there out. And then you mixed it all up. No, 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 no. Okay, wait. So what he wanted to do is start with 50, okay. right? And then call out the numbers for the, call out the people or the numbers for those 50. Yeah. Then from those 50, take 10 out and then call out the, yeah, call, the yeah, left. the 40 left. No, the 10. So that way they know they're still in the running. So the ten that we take out, they'll, they'll be eliminated because we're done. We we'll started with this. Well, went over there. Where? Here it is. I got it. Oh my god. <laughs> this thing keeps popping out. Oh, here it is. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That one goes over here. That yeah. little one. Eight. 
Nine ten. Come on, three of them. Nine ten. All right. So, so we have one over there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Those go in the bucket. No, three. She had three. Huh? We're eliminating. Are you eliminating? Yeah. 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 Putting okay. Them in the yeah. Okay. I got you. Yeah. I'm sorry. You got it. We're eliminating. Yeah, because you had all fifty in the basket. Yeah. Okay. There you go. There you go. This okay. one goes in here. So we're taking out ten and putting in the basket and we're eliminating. Two. Three. Chinga, me comprate este calendario general o qué, carnal? I just know. I'm on my way over here. <laughs> in family dollar, the <laughs> family dollar, man. All right, we were worried about the big basket. You know, but he didn't fit in the RV to the door. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It was one more dollar. Eight, <laughs> nine. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, one more. Hey there. Yo no sé por qué chicas se sale esta madre. It's giving me a headache. Maybe we should flip it inside the bucket now. Okay. Oh, so that's my 20. goodness. Yes. So we still have 30 in here. Right, right. And then, okay. And we don't know nothing. That way the fans don't right now don't know who's in and who's out. That's kind of a good thing because everybody's in suspense. They, oh, am I in or am I out? Or? We're not going to know until the last 10. <laughs> Oh my God. Nobody said it was going to be easy. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Why do you think I let you do it? <laughs> oh, my God. What would they have thought? Oh, what are you yeah. doing, Jaime? Oh, you're Jaime, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Everyone Seven. Yeah, everyone out there is watching it right now. Thank you so much. Eight. Eight. Got it. Nine. Mm -hmm. One more. <laughs> Ten. Vámonos. Okay. Afuera. Pa fuera. Como dice fuera. ahora en América. Fuera de aquí. Fuera. All right. Okay, we have what, 20 or 30 in here? 20. We have 20. We have 20. We have one. Yep. Two. Two. This, it's not me, it's the steak. <laughs> Three. Four. Five. You can do it. You can do it. Six. Seven. Oh, there eight. There you go. Ah! Uh, almost. Uh, Nine. One more. Ten. Okay. So there's ten left. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. So out of these ten. You want to call them out? Yeah. Let's call out the numbers that are ten left. That was people know. Okay. These okay. ten numbers is what's you know, it's it's gonna. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You call it out. Basically. You got yes. Hold on. Vision. Yes. Just wait. Just. Uh, yeah. Empty oh, these yeah. out so we can use this. So we're gonna call out these ten numbers. All right. After we call out the numbers, the people know who's in, still in. Okay. And so what's that number be? We're going to eliminate three. Okay. Oh, eliminate, okay. Yeah. After we do these ten, call out the numbers, we're going to eliminate seven. Wait, wait, wait a second. Wait, wait. Hold on a second. Okay. There's ten in here. Right. We're going to eliminate seven right now. No, no. no. First, let's no. Say, first let's say the numbers that are uh, ten. So people know who's... Oh, so you want us to pull out yes. the numbers and yes. say all the numbers? Yeah, let's say the 10 numbers right now. Okay. So, so put say, them okay, all right here. We're in. We're still in. All right, okay. Let's do that first. Let's keep, I throw them in here? Yes, yes, all of them. We had already emptied these. Okay, so now these 10 right here, we're going to keep them all. Ya me trastornaron todos. Okay. Okay, I had 10 chicken nuggets. Okay. Okay. Put them all in here. Okay. 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 The next okay. is we're going to eliminate seven the numbers. And then so what do you have? Okay, number? so this number is 53. 53 Put it inside. goes in here. Number 53, 53 you're 53. in there. 53. All right. Okay. Seven. Oops. Seven. Number seven. Number seven. Okay. Number seven. Eight. 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 Eight.
Enseña el acordeón, Jaime. Ahí, ahí la tienes tú. Nairi. Nairi, number Nairi. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share, right? We got a lot of yes. fun going on here. That's right. What number First time ever. Okay, is this one 98 or 86? Can you check? I'm sorry. 98 or 86 or 96? 98 or 86? 86? Okay. 86. I can't see the numbers. Six? Number six? Uh-oh. Six. Six, six, six. Uh-uh. Whoever you are, I hope you guys are watching right now. We're announcing the numbers. If Riley's having a hard time... Well, no, it's because you... I mean, it could be... Yeah, Either or. Yeah, yeah, this one's. What was the like other one? Ninety nine. What 66? is this one? Ninety eight. Ninety eight. Little line. Give me a little yeah. line. Ninety eight. Okay. Ninety eight. Yeah, because okay, the other one was eighty six. So if you flip it, it's you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Por eso deben de poner una limita debajo del number. Fifty nine. Fifty nine. Fifty nine. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm hmm. One hundred sixty seven. One hundred sixty-seven. Okay. One hundred sixty-seven. Wow. wow, that was close to the end there. Right. One hundred ninety. One hundred ninety. Yeah, that was, that maybe the last number in Seoul, maybe. Uh oh. All right. Um, twenty-six. Twenty-six. All right. So these are the ten. So now, what are we gonna do with these ten? Okay. Now you're gonna roll right. We're gonna eliminate seven. Okay. We're gonna eliminate seven. And there's gonna be three left. And with those three, we're gonna start with. The We'll get to that point in a minute. We're gonna eliminate seven, okay? So rotate it. One. Go ahead. Two. Two. Three. Uh -oh. I'm getting nervous. Four. Five. Five. I say bye to my courting. Six. There you go. Ready. There you go. <laughs> seven. I'm gonna hug it for the last time. So what are we gonna do with these seven? Okay. Put them in. Seven. Yeah. In the okay. bucket. They're eliminated. Okay. Let's. let's um, now the three numbers that are left is gonna be first, second, and third place. Okay. So third, second, first place. Okay. So, so let's find let's, out what let's they find are. out who the three numbers left. But you need to leave them in there. Yeah. No, but no, you, you I want you to tell us the numbers. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then we'll put them back in. Sorry. Okay. Here we go. Three numbers that are left for third, second, and first place. There's too many chiefs and not enough Indians here. No. Nobody's got fingers. Can we even say that anymore? I mean, everybody that's uh, uh. <laughs> you know, political correctness and shit. <laughs> This one's 86, because it was the first one. Okay, 86. Yes. 86. Well, they're going to win something. Yep, that's right. Six. Six. Oh, six. Okay, number six. 86 and six. And one seven. More. Seven. Wow. wow. Six, seven, and 86. Six, seven, and 86. Okay. Okay, so we got third place. Now, before we, uh, okay. we get into this, uh, let's uh, let's show off that accordion, baby, on the, on that. Put the camera on the accordion, babe. Do you want to do the commercial or no? Yeah, you know what? Mm -hmm. uh, let's. We'll be right back, folks. We got to do our Dr. T's primary care for men, all right? And we appreciate them sponsoring this event, okay? All right, and sponsoring hashtag PVT. Here we go. With fall season and flu season coming up on us, Dr. T's Primary Care is offering flu vaccines to help keep you safe this flu season. Call us at 956-441-2188 to schedule your appointment. Also, take advantage of all the immune-boosting treatments Dr. T's Primary Care has to offer, from vitamins, supplements, immune-boosting injections, IV infusions, and we still offer COVID testing as well. So call 956-441-2188 today to schedule your flu vaccine with Dr. T's Primary care. All right, we're back. So here we go. There's three more. Okay. Now, with these three left, we're going to take out one. It's going to be third place. And, and you know what? For third place, 
I have some gift certificates here. Okay. Okay, here's a Visa gift certificate. Lift them up, put them in the camera there on their phone. Mm -hmm. There we go. Right there. All right. So the Visa will be the third place. The snake? No, this way. There you go. Yeah. Visa, yeah. first yeah. place. That's $25 gift certificate. Okay. The third place. Second place, this is the Out, Outback Steakhouse. Okay. $35 yeah. gift certificate. And the first place will be the yeah, accordion. The first place. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is it. Are you guys ready? Are you ready? This is for third place. Right. Numbers 86, 6, and 7 are in there. What is the number for third place? Here you go. Uh-oh. Third place? Mm-hmm. Seven? Seven. Seven. Right. Seven. Seven gets a visa. Seven gets a visa. Okay. okay. Seven, congratulations, number seven. It's Brian Medina. Brian Medina. Okay, this is for second place, the Outback Steakhouse. Right. What number is it, baby? Mm -hmm. 86. 86. 86. All right. You know who won? Yeah. So the winner is right here, baby. Why don't you say the name or the number? The number? On the microphone, please. Yes, the number is six. Six. Here you All go. Right. Congratulations to the winner. And uh, by the way, that accordion comes in this awesome box, man. It's a JDA on it. Wow, man, that's awesome. Number six. Antonio. Garcia. At Atan Atanasio? Yeah. Where is he from? Does he does it say where he's I, I, from? I was trying to look at it up real quick because I only put his name. Yeah, because we have a list of all the numbers. Uh, yeah, and their names and their phone numbers. Congratulations. If you're watching right now, come on. Let me know. Let Atanasio. Me know Atanasio right. Garcia. Congratulations. One accordion and free lessons. Woo! That is awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you there three free lessons. Three. Atanasio. Uh -oh. You are the winner. I, I wonder where he's from. We need to look him up, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, I hope if you're watching right now, you know, make a comment and let us know that, you know, you, that you're the winner and everybody I know. I need to, I'm trying to remember what town is he from. We'll find I have his email. I have his email and everything. And then sure. we're going to make a little we promo and we're going to announce it for the rest of the week, you know. And uh, and I'm going to sign it. I'm going to sign the yeah. for you. Yeah. I'm going to sign the for you. It's it's awesome. awesome. Wow. So, uh, Jaime, so what's next for Jaime de Anda, dude? Right after I don't know. I can't play now. I don't have an accordion now. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what's the buy an accordion now? No, I'm oh my gosh. <laughs> I want to thank Mike Gabinelli, of course, Gabinelli Accordions, for, uh, you know, being there for me for me since day one from his dad, um, Mr. John Gabinelli. I tell you, they're, they're, they're a great family. They're awesome. Mike's an awesome person right now. He does a great job of tuning the accordions. It's fantastic. He's. I mean, it's a mirror. It's crazy to see him. That, and I'll ask him all the time, don't you, don't you play the accordion? Because he's playing all kinds of notes on the guitar. He's, he's tuning it over. And I go, don't you play the accordion? He goes, no, I don't know how to play the accordion. I go, you could have fooled me because he, he does all kinds of notes, but he's testing each one of the reeds in there. And, and he's fine tuning them real quick. And he's, and I mean, he's amazing what he does. Yeah. And he knows exactly what I want on my accordions, how I want them tuned. And believe me, I don't care what anybody says. I've played with the Cordes Gabinets for so long. I've tried all kinds. I have. I've tried all kinds of brands. But and that's one, yours, man. That's the one you like. And, and one, one important thing about your instrument, you have to be comfortable with it. That's yeah. what counts. And it's, guitars are the same. They got Any Fender, instrument. they've got Gibson, they've got yeah. all these kinds of brands. Now you know. And you have to, you know, you have to, you find that, that, that one that just fits you perfect. You know? play all kinds of instruments and something you realize and you think, why, why does this feel different? Or, or how come I can, you know, the strings can be different? Or why does this sound different? Or how come it feels comfortable? And, you know, straps, everything. Everything's important about an instrument when you're, you know, when you're learning about it. It's not just learning the instrument. It's understanding. It's getting to know it really like one-on-one. -on -one. And, and when you get comfortable and, and, you realize, when, I guess when you realize the comfort of the, of the instrument, you feel comfortable playing. Yeah. You, know? you want to play because I've, I've had a couple of students that, that you know, they'll hold it sideways or hold it this way and, and they're having a hard time with their hand mm -hmm. and stuff. And it's weird that, I, that I'm able to Form. Teach, yeah, I'm able to teach and, and show and share what I've learned. It took so long to learn about the instrument, about the accordion, and to share with a lot of fans out there that are... They're signing up for according lessons still, and I'm glad that I'm able to help out and teach a lot of I have a lot of young girls, little girls, 12, 13, 
that are learning the accordion. It's, it's amazing to watch them, how they first started, and they're in their six or seven lesson, and they're already playing a polka, they're learning already scales and stuff. And it's amazing, but at first it was really scary, you know, nervous and everything, because, you know, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, what, but but you see them now, and they're getting the confident, they're getting the confident now. They're, yeah, and I feel like, wow, I'm sharing, you know, I'm sharing that talent with someone, with the next generation, with the young generation, you know, to know that they're really interested in learning the accordions. Like I said, if you want to learn also, you know, email me, Jaime Deanda, 79 at Gmail, and, and I'll give you more information about lessons and signing up and, and how, you know, you can get a lot of, you know, learn a lot, whatever I can help you with and whatever I can teach you, that's what I appreciate and, and I'm honored to do it, to share my talent of so many years. Well, yeah, I mean, before we call it a night, uh, uh, you know, we are talking about Manuel and, uh, and uh, Juan, P. Juan P. And, you had uh, done a uh, performance with them in Monterrey. Uh, you went to Mexico and did. Uh, yeah. You had some plans uh, to do something with them. Uh, what exactly were those plans? Are those plans still in you know in in the works in well, case everything just comes back to normal? Uh, what kind of uh, what kind of communication do you have with Juan P and with uh, Manuel on that? Because well, you've got your own band, you've got your musicians. Yeah. But uh, that was an int that was something that was kind of intriguing and interesting to me to see you guys the originals up on there again, you know. Well, you know, it, it's when you being on stage all of us together was one thing. It's so special and stuff, but it's always something else in the back. Like you know, it can be the production, it can be you know the promoter, it can be uh, something went down, something didn't get paid, someone didn't get paid enough, or you know, when it gets to those kind of technical deal deals, until they, they until they get settled communication com continues again, you know, and, and that's what's important, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Fans don't know that, you know, you want to see, you know, what you grew up with, you know. I remember seeing you guys when I was in high school or in elementary or in middle school, you know, and I understand that, I understand, you know, it could happen, it could, it so, might not happen again. Was there so, some sort of issue with the, you know, who got more money than who else, or was there well, something going on with that? I, I think because, you know... Anything can happen. Anything's possible in Mexico, also, and it's hard to argue in that side of the country. Yeah. And to say anything else because it's not your grounds. So was it worth going to Mexico and doing I, the show I, over there? I mean, sure, you? sure, sure. I, I mean, la gente de Mexico me encanta bastante porque me. But financially and stuff, you know, I mean, did you did you get paid okay? Over yeah, there? yeah. I'm not gonna say I didn't. Of course, you know, I did. You know, but there's always. You know the uh, uh, who spearheaded that deal for you guys? Like, uh, was it Julian that, that hooked up the gig and, and put it all together, or did you have to deal well, with somebody on that side? Well, when they wanted to do this deal, of course they had, uh, you know, J Julian. They talked with Julian when Juan and Manny were talking about this. Is Juan talks to promoters over there and, he, and they're telling him what he wants, and he comes and, and then he's because it's like booking three bands, right? Exactly. I mean, it's like booking Juan P. It's booking you, and it's booking Manuel. So. Yeah. And then whoever's playing bass, who played bass for you guys? Uh, you know, Ted. Ted the, well, Ted plays bass. Ted, he, he plays, plays bass, everything. He yeah. plays bass and he dances and everything yeah. else. And, yeah. and well, Ted, he gets paid, but this was really like hiring three guys, right. you know, individually. So each one of them had their manager or their idea of doing it, I would assume, right? Or what? That's why it was kind of like, you know, who's going to do this or who's going to get this? And, it, it, you know, it's kind of hard. People don't realize Putting a show together, it is. You know, it's not just say, hey, but was there an agreement it, you know? before sure. going over there? Like, okay, yeah. this is what we got. This is how much we're going to get paid. This is what everybody's going right. to get. Are we good with it? Can we still? Do you still want to do it? Right. Did everybody agree to that and said, "Sabes qué, vamos a ponerle para Monterrey a tocar a ver qué onda." And you know what you always hear? Well, there wasn't enough people. Uh -huh. So it has something to do with the promoter, and you know, did you all get you know cut out some uh, yeah. money that you think would yeah. would have. Uh, so, exactly. So that's what. And you're not gonna, you're not about to go raise some hell over there, bro. About it. You know? <laughs> I mean, no me me pagas ahorita or no, you know what I mean. No me quedo aquí. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know but yeah. it happens over there. It happens here. We understand. And you know, a lot of fans don't know that. You know, yeah. and it, it's sad because the fans miss out on what's going on. And, and you then, were able to use the name over there, right? Your original name, and, uh, and it was okay, or was it? Uh, you well, just went up to somebody else, or what was it? No, it's. You know, you can say what you want in Mexico. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, no one's going to say anything because it's another country, number one. Uh, they were announcing each one of our names. And, you know, the, when we were once together. And who remembers those chamacos back then, you know, back in the 88, 89, and, and what we did. 
everything. Maybe you could have you could have added del pasado, los blancos del pasado, or maybe it would have changed the whole name all of them right there, or something like that. Yeah, there's so many. You could do anything over there, believe yeah. me. You can say what you want. Well, but, as long as you don't have the name or the rights to the name, or, is there, or it's under litigation, there's no yeah. chance of that ever coming to fruition with you three guys unless you add to some sort of uh, addition to the name itself, right? You see, that, that's another thing. You know, so much going on, the commotion happening. It's like, when is it going to be over? Of course, everybody's wondering what's happening. Everybody's saying so much. Everybody thinks they know everything. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is between me and the person that made the deal, what happened about this, about this name and stuff. So that's what counts. And, and all I can say is, I am going to fight for what I believe in. I'm going to fight what's mine and what belongs to me, of course. And that's the way it's going to be. And that's the way I've done my dues. I paid my, my debts and everything else. And Has the other guy reached out to you and said, hey, look, give me this and I'll give you the name? I mean, he doesn't want to deal anything like that? He wants well, to keep it or what? Well, he tried that and gave me a ridiculous number. Like, oh, my gosh. Well, I mean, you can always sit down and then decide and say, hey, look, I'll... Because usually uh, when people ask for something, it's like selling a car, you know. Right. You, you want 2500 for the car, you're going to ask for 3500 and then break it down to what you want. But, right. you know, obviously it's got to be some sensible number that works for both people. You know what I right. mean? Exactly. And uh, what are, And if that number doesn't work, well, what am I supposed to get out of this? Will I ever be able to reach that number with the name when it really doesn't really work for us because it never really belonged to us and it doesn't, you know what I mean? So well, there's know, all kinds of things that right. come into consideration. Because when, when I did my three years there, whatever I did, he made his money back plus. I know he did. You know, and there's so many things to be said, of course. We can go on back and forth. We can say, he can say, I can say, he can say. The bottom line is me and him, he knows exactly what went down. He knows exactly what was said. He knows exactly what was paid. And if I owe anything and he owes anything, come on. He made enough money to where all he had to do was give back what belonged to me because what, what was paid for and what was due. And this wouldn't have been happened. It would, probably wouldn't have happened. But it happened for a reason. Why? Because when you got no one, you know, apparently these, these guys, they all turned their backs. They all looked the other way and thought, no, this is ours. Now it's ours. And it's all wow. After so many years, now look what, how we're being, look how we're talking, look what's being said. I mean, we can throw words back and forth. We can say so many things back and forth. We're not only harming ourselves, but we're putting out there, we're harming our fans and making them think and making them choose, which we, we shouldn't have to. I mean, it's, it was a negotiation that was done, yes, and it was a debt that was needed to be paid. I did. I did my work. I played. I did everything. It's just that the intentions were still not there. Me not realizing that their intentions were to not give it back. That's what it was. And so the litigation happening. you're going through has nothing to do with the name either, right? It has something else. It's all about something else that we won't discuss here. Well, but yeah. it just has nothing to do with the name. The, the name is nothing because it's they they have it. I mean, right? I mean, they're, they they're not trying right. to take. You're not using it, yeah. right? You I'm know, able you, to say formally, of course, like uh -huh. anyone else. But, you know, it's like every other band. But like, I don't even think you need to do that, bro. It's just JDA well, is good, right? I love it, too, because, you know, once I get the name, it's up to me what I'm going to do with it. You're going to have two back. brands if you ever do get that name back. And, you know, and, you'll have two brands, your JDA and that. Yeah, and, and to me, I think um, if whatever happens, I'm going to put the, the name on the shelf. It's time to retire the name, you know? Yeah. It's time to put it there because... I mean, I've heard it so many years. Oh, yeah. Why don't I just come in home with the, the, the group? Yeah, you know, all kinds of yeah. interviews. You know, I, I'm sure you're right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, he's seven years old. But they can get away with it. They can get away with it. So can them. I mean, I mean, you can. That name is. It's 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 just. Yeah. It's a synonymous. It's synonymous with the 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 music, your accordion, your 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 voice, and everything. You know, it's 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 true. But but since a situation like this occurred and happened, and you know how things got out of hand and what's going on, I don't mind. I know that, you know, JDA for a lot of people that don't recognize or don't still know or understand that I'm on my own doing my own thing and what's happening out there. I mean, I don't care what anybody says, you know. This is between me and the person that made the deal, honestly. And that's what's gonna be determined. At the everybody, end of the day. Exactly, everybody else can say this and that, say what they want, they can, you know, all you're doing is you're dogging my family, my family's gonna dog your family. Who's gonna benefit out of this? All we, got, all we do 
Because, of course, we're looking, everybody looking dumb and, and hating on each other. Well, same thing with sports. I mean, people want to kill each other because, you know, the teams or this team or that team. You know, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But, <laughs> but it, doesn't need, it doesn't need to go too far, no. of course. It doesn't. Not when you're involved personal or you're talking family or this and that. We're all human. We understand. Yeah, yeah. But when sometimes they say, oh, it's best to keep quiet, not to say so much, this and that. How long can you stay quiet? How long can you accept being... I mean, rocks throwing at you when you're going to get tired, when you're going to have to say, you know what, I'm human too. I have a right to let people know this is what's really my side of the story. There's always two sides to a story, yeah. and that's not what the judge is going to look at. Well, so we us, understand. Keep us up to date. Is there any court date or anything that you guys are looking at already? Well, with the COVID going on, I'm sure it's pretty long and yeah. this and that. Because like, these type of court cases, they take forever to go to court, bro. I mean, you got to do all this litigation. Yes. Uh, you got to do discovery. you got <laughs> yeah. to do... You know, um, really? when, when you yeah. sit down in front of somebody and do the what deposition, is it depositions, yeah, uh, and then you can go into mediation, yeah, and yeah. then in mediation is where you might be able to just, you know, not even go to court. You know what? Fuck it. Let's just do this, court, and then yeah. we're done. You know, Sometimes, I mean, yeah. you go your own way, we go on our own way. Uh, you know, maybe it could be where, you know what, Jaime, we'll give you the name, you go ahead and keep it, but you got to let us play the music still and use some sort of it, like, you know. There's negotiation. That's yeah, That's yeah. what mediation is all about. Are you, you know, willing, are you willing to sit down and just, hey, you know, I mean, I, are I, you open to some sort of an idea? I'm always going to be open and willing right. to sit down and, and, you know, fight for, what, like I said, what I believe. But, of course, you know, he's going to listen to his attorney, I'm going to listen to my attorney, and whatever's going to, the, 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 the bottom line is the judge is going to listen to both stories, and see what makes sense, and see what's real, and see who really does the name belong to, who deserves it, yeah. or who did, who did right, who did wrong, whatever's happening. And the bad part, all this time, meanwhile, meanwhile, while this is going on, all this commotion, everybody fans, look, I love all my fans. I've worked hard for what I do. I worked hard for to, to be on stage. I worked hard for all these musicians. These guys, who knew who they were before? Who knew who they were? They know, and no matter what, they started right here. I gave every, yeah. each and every one of them an opportunity to be somebody, and that's true in any band. But you know what? You, you got to also take into consideration they were loyal to you for a long time, bro, and both of y'all together yeah. did magic together, right? Yeah, yeah. They so, were. I mean, you know, you got to do give them a little consideration and credit that they did. They, they were a major part of your success as well. So I have, you know, know. I have in the same, I have in the same reason when, when you hear them talk and them thinking, He's selfish. He's all about himself. He don't care about us. Nothing like that. You know? So it's like, again, back to Piquete. You know? Mm -hmm. You're going to say, I say. You're going to say, I say. And the bottom line is, no matter what, they got somewhere and they became somebody right here. Right here where it started from. No matter what anybody else says. Any opportunity you want to. Hey, everybody else can do what they want. Who were they before? They played with other bands before. They had their own names. They did something. Who were they? No one knew who they were. But they became somebody here. Sure, you had to stick it out. But what does it take? You're going to have to pay your dues and stick it out with the company that's making you. Mm -hmm. Because if the company's not making you and you're not happy, why are you still here? You should have left a long time ago. Don't complain now and act like, oh, well, he didn't care about us. He thought about himself first. I mean, we, you can say all this stuff. And I can say a lot of stuff, too, that I know. I know these guys, too, 25 yeah. years. We, each, each, we all personally know about what's right and what's wrong and the inside. But the bad part is, the fans are taking everything the wrong way. Fans are going to say what they want to say. I understand. They're Everybody's going to support. Yeah, yeah. You have a strong fan base, man. I mean, everybody you know, loves the Jaime de Anda. Everybody loves those chamacos, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And, and they loved those chamacos before, too. You know, Manny and Juan P. You know, it, we can keep yeah. going. David de Anda started. My, my cousin. He was the first one. My nephew, Ruben de Anda. And Juan P. went and did his own thing. And, he, you know, he went exactly. and said, yeah, Everybody's good. entitled to go and make their own, you know, move on. But it started right there with the family. Me, David Yander, my, my nephew, Ruben yeah. Yander. We started everything. We did something we didn't know it was going to be huge or it was going to make other people, you know, realize music is beautiful. Conjunto is not just bar music and stuff like that. But we did something. Yeah. And we didn't know it was going to make miracles. It was going to bring young generations involved and make so many conjuntos like there is today. You know, I, 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 I still say the thing, the most important thing is it's not about being selfish. It's not about, about taking care of yourself. It's about what's important in the company. What keeps the company? What makes the company? Yeah. And how hard do you have to work 
in any company. I don't care if you, hey, just because you work for ATB and you retired for ATB doesn't you, mean you own it. You do what's best for business, and that's what it is to keep everybody working. Um, right. Speaking of David, the other bro, uh, do you have a relationship with David? Or do you all hang out, talk? or? Yeah, yeah, you know, as long as... You he's know, your he's, primo. I mean, he's, he's, he's got excelencia, you yeah. know. He's, he's out there trying to, you know, do something as well. I don't think he's reached the success that you have with uh, with uh, maybe when Excelencia had ni por mi puñados de oro. That was probably one of the highlights of <laughs> hey, his I, career. I will say this though, even though when that was happening, because we were we weren't talking, we were mad, and you know, cousins. Why, 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 why were why why were you all mad at each other back then, bro? Well, uh, we basically back then we raised David. His mom and dad, or having problems with David, or this and that. I don't know. For some reason, they they they, they asked us and, and talking with us, and you know, talking. I heard his mom talking to my mom, and, and they were back and forth and saying, you know, can you just you know take care of David right now? You know, you know. I don't know exactly their personal what was going on. I was 15, 14 years old, and uh, not realizing. Well, David, to me, I thought, oh, he's David with us for a while. He stuck with us. At the same time, when I was playing with my dad, learning music, it was, he was hanging out with me. So he started picking up on music. He started picking up on the bass. So he played the bass first. You know? So from there, he picked up on the basso sexto, following my dad's steps. So I stayed with the accordion. And when he picked up on the basso sexto, we started getting recognized from. Yeah, we, were called, last, we were called as Today as the Houston first in 1977. Yeah. That's what we were called. And when we got. Uh, the new name of you know of and, you and your dad yeah, you, and then you and your dad moved on and what well, then he did and, you know you know how families are well what happened yeah. is you know you told us the whole story the yeah, first time you yeah, came yeah, in and, you know? and, and that's what happened you know, it just things happen because you get flow or you know you, everybody wants but to what, have was, what was what was the main estia that you and david had back then in the 90s and it was it was it just a competitive thing like you wouldn't be anything without having been with us or was it money or was any what do I mean I mean it's way back in the past I know I, I mean, we talk about it too we laugh about it once in a while I mean say, or do you not you even crazy? know why the hell we were mad at each other we were just mad right well yeah I think we, I mean, we can all say Chief Lau we can all say oh because I wanted something <laughs> if I wanted to watch he would tell my he almost thought you know because his dad and my dad were almost twins but yeah. he was so close to my dad too and and since we were. Becoming something where we're now recording an album, and I tell my dad, Dad, I want to go watch David too. Uh, Theo, I, I want to go watch too. Yeah. Uh, I want some new shoes, Dad. Wow. He's like, uh, Theo, well, I want some new shoes too. Yeah. And, and he kept going like that, like kids. Guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he kept going like that, kids, and you know, and just kept going and kept getting out of hand. I kept thinking, yeah. I kept saying, Hey, what, what? I told my dad, What, what? If I want, why you gotta buy him too? And this and that. So, you know, we're, we're growing up as family and, yeah. and, and looking at it and thinking, Okay, but what about the music? We were doing something. We Estamos chavos, you know. Where are you? Well, no, no, ahora como tan tú y David hablan y todo. Yeah, yeah, we still Just, talk. We're you still all think about talk about the past and crack up with all, all the, you know. <laughs> you know, David is something else. I mean, he, I mean, he has his own talent. I just think that he didn't take it as seriously as he should have. I think he maybe he cares about it. Maybe he doesn't. You know, because. There's sometimes he's involved in music so much, and there's days that I talk to him, he don't even care about music, or he's always telling me, oh, I'm in Vegas right now. I'm in Vegas, and, you know, just having a good time, and this and that. I said, that, that's local dude, David. You know, so, but, the, you know, the, the talk is still there. You know, because we are family. I know I understand it. But I will let everyone out there know, fans and family and friends, you know, don't react so fast or try to think that, being a hater and saying things about your own family so much or saying so many bad things about wives and stuff like that, hey, it gets out of hand where we're all going to defend ourselves. We're all going to say something. Yeah. I'm going to get offended to talking about my wife. I'm just like everybody else. We're going to protect who, who we love, who we care for. And who but, backs us up. And who percent. backs us Exactly. Who backs us up. And who's there for us when, you know, when the things are tough. When you're at the bottom. When, when I was at the bottom, at the very bottom, remember when I first got to the very bottom? She's the one that said, hey, you need to get up now. You need to get out there. You've There's had your struggles, man. I mean, I, I mean I've, you've been up and down and, you know, and you've been, I've lost so many times, you know. It's, I mean, what luck do I have? How can, nobody can tell me. I don't know what it's like to lose. But you know what? Away but you, and get up. You started from the bottom, so you know how to get to the top, man. You know, you know how to get back up. I've always been a worker. That, that's the thing about not, you know, people that start at the top... <laughs> They fall to the bottom. They know how to get to the top again, bro. Yeah, and the right. thing is, is, you come as a six-year-old kid playing with your dad in the bars and growing up through the whole scene and then starting your own band and then having direction and goals 
and then you just start recording your music you see and you have a vision of what you want to do and you do it and you start building it up and then it crashes down and then you just know how to bring it back up but it just takes patience and it just takes uh, perseverance is what it's called and a lot of basic and yeah you're right and it's also it takes a you know like and we're still doing. <laughs> we're still doing it at, at our age, man. You we're know, still getting up and trying to, <laughs> to see. Down, and then we start thinking, damn, I'm this old. Well, I only got this much room to get back where I was. Exactly. So it gets kind of crazy. Man. But you know, it, 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 they can say, oh, there's all kind of managers out there. There's everybody is going to steal from you. Everybody this and that. But I tell you what, I've been through. Of course, my family, my mom and dad, Henry was there. David and my daughter was there. You know, uh, uh, different managers. But I, I tell you this though. Julian Johnson has made a difference. Has grew up with me. I grew up with him. He's a nice family. guy, bro. Well, he's he's a hard worker. He he comes, and Livianita, bro. And man, and bro. Well, he he comes and he understands exactly where I come from because he was in the same boat. He worked hard. He struggled. He did his best. He didn't let no one knock him down. If they did, well, he got back up. You know. And, and I grew up with his parents, and I, and I I remember playing with him so many times and talking with him. And he doesn't and look crazy. like. I mean, I I'm a pretty good judge of character. To me, no such message. He's the type that has a malicious uh, bone in him. That I mean, I may be wrong. I don't know, bro. You know, <laughs> hey, uh, to try well, to hurt somebody, you know. But I you know, he just seems like a good guy to me. I don't know. I well, may be wrong. Well, he used to be a sheriff up there in, in San Antonio. He was oh, in yeah? the sheriff's department. I yeah, he, he knows a lot. He does know a lot. He knows a lot about promoting. He knows a lot about being an agent. He's Work with top, uh, you know, party band with record labels. He's done with rock bands and stuff. He knows his business. Yeah. He knows what he's talking about. Yeah. He knows what he's doing. And I trust you. Got to trust your manager one day or another. Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. You got. I, got yeah. I trust my wife. I trust. You know. I trust my musicians. I'm hoping that they're gonna do what they need to do on stage, and, and you know, they're gonna believe in me also to do what I need to do on stage, and and to have a man like John, you know Julian to say, you know, I'm gonna be here for you. It's going to be about you. We're going to get you back up. We're going to do what it takes. Are you willing to work harder and do what it takes? Are you willing to change whatever needs to be done? It's going to be a lot of people that are going to say yes and understand. Some people are going to say what's going on. And Well, when you do something original and different, it's going to be a change. It doesn't mean you change completely. Yeah. But he has so many ideas in the studio. He's very creative. He's a hell of a producer. He's got good ideas of arrangements. I mean, sometimes we, we may bump a couple of, uh, you know, bump uh, it's once in a while, but, but that's, that's part of the creative process. That's part of, yeah, you know what? I got to convince him that you I'm right. To He's got to convince me that, do, yeah. do, do, I, do I do it or not? Does it make sense or not? It's good and to then, have somebody <laughs> like that, bro. But sometimes we'll go, and then we'll both look, we'll look at each other, and then we'll look at Darlene, because she knows a lot about music. I, she used to be an engineer, too. I mean, mm -hmm. she, she might not be in the studio engineer. But she understands because it's crazy. Work. She can hear things like, hey, go to the song. She'll go to the song guy and say, hey, this doesn't sound right. right. You better get that right. I said, my wife también. You know, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we're listening to music on the radio and stuff like that. And she'll distinguish. She'll yeah, distinguish yeah. certain she's instruments. She's got an ear for that. it. Yeah, and she'll, yeah. she'll notice that saying, what are you doing? She goes, well, listen to the bass part here and listen to this. And this is how he does the run here. I said, that's crazy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> You're going to bump heads with Julian next. <laughs> <laughs> hey, before we, uh, before we get to go, man, um, how are your kids, man? How, how old are your kids? How oh many gosh. kids you got, bro? Uh, about 150 is the way people talk out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm musico chinga. <laughs> My dad had eight sons. Eight. Yeah. I'm his... I'm the only son for my mom, okay? I have eight half-brothers, and believe me, I only know half of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and out of all of them, not one became a musician. Well, you're so, the only one. yeah, and everybody's thinking, oh, what did I mean? Well, I have four sons. Four sons? One daughter. What yeah. are their names, man? Uh, I got Josh, Joshua, I have James, and I have Gael, and I have Giancarlo, and I have Jamie. Mm -hmm. So... My kids. And what are, what are the age ranges? I oh, mean, my gosh. From what, um, what are their ages? Well, Junior is already 23. Josh is 21. Uh, Dunk, uh, Jaime Gael, he's 11. 11. And Giancarlo, I think he's already 8. Mm -hmm. and, and it's crazy that they have their own, you know, like Junior, for instance, he loves about movies and stuff. Producing, he says he's going to be a movie, but he works at the movies. He's been working there for so long, and... He does what he does. Yeah. Joshua, I thought he was going to be a musician or a recording player. He tried, but he's a he's a welder. 
He's learned so much and he's got a good job. And I told him, son, awesome. stay there. Yeah. yeah, you have a real job. You know, man, what anybody <laughs> says, everybody thinks musicians don't have a real job. And your job. real job, his real job can finance his dream job. You know what True. I mean? True. And, or invest in his dream job so maybe he can transition one day if he does have any aspirations. I know, but I don't know. Every time he goes to my shows, I say, son, when are you going to take over so I can retire so I can retire? Dad, I can't do that. I, just, I'm not, I can't dance and all that stuff. That you, are you kidding me? Well, I told you, why don't you start now? You know, you know, we always talk a lot of time because he's the one that talks the most. My other son that looks like me, he's real quiet. So your he's relationship with your kids is good, everything? You yeah. talk, you get to see your kids and they get to stay with you and I hang get, out with you? I, I get to like see that? my older kids. My, okay. my, you know, the like little ones? Else, the little them. ones, well, they're little too, I understand. And, well, eight and, years old isn't too little. I mean, exactly, yeah. I know. But, you know, how moms are. And, and Do you have any type of a deal where, you know, you get them for the weekend or a week or a month or anything like well, that? Well, I've been waiting for that to happen again, yeah, so it hasn't happened. Has, has, has yeah. happen. so that's another thing. So yeah. That's another story that we all well, know. Man, I, I, hope, uh, I hope it works out for you. So Thank you. Can, you know, because I used to freak out with, like, Jimmy Gonzalez, man. All his kids were around him, man. You know, all his kids were running. One of them was uh, doing the booking. Yeah. The other one was drumming. The other one was mm -hmm. collecting and making the pay. And, you know, I mean, so... Uh, that was something that I used to admire from Jimmy, you know, that all his kids were... Well, he knew that if your family, hey, he knew if you were family, you weren't going to get paid as, you know, <laughs> as an employee. Yeah. 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 You know. well, but it's good, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Was doing it, but, uh, he did well. Yeah, yeah did. and uh, yeah, man, so that's awesome, man. Hi, man, I appreciate you coming over here, and I, I appreciate you, Julian, having the faith in our show, Hashtag PBT. Uh, to do this awesome, uh, you know, giveaway of the, of the beautiful accordion. I mean, if you can see, ladies and gentlemen, this accordion is beautiful. We want to congratulate the winner. Yes. Anastasio, I think his name is. Anastasio Garcia is his name. And, yes. uh, you know, I mean, he's got a, he's got a piece of history here. Because this is uh, this uh, accordion. I can't wait to see him in person and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be on. Yeah. Make sure that you videotape when you're, when you're with him or when you give it to him in person or whatever. Uh, use an iPhone, that way you can send me the info or the video and I can be able to upload it uh, as far on the show and show everybody the, you I, know, I, the reaction, you know. And not, not only that, I want to thank each and every one that participated, each and every one that, you know, bought a ticket and, and really, you know, showed the support. I want to say something really special, well, something very important to each and every one of my fans out there that are still fans and that are not fans or whatever they are, whatever it is, remember, we're all human, we all do our best. We all believe in ourselves. We're on stage. And what we try to do on stage is apart from what we do at home. So let's try to keep it separate, you know? You know, family and things that are going on, if you want to talk about things, keep it. Remember personal. Don't bring out our personal lives if you don't like us to bring out your personal lives. It's supposed to stay personal. Yeah, but it's, it's, professional. Tough. it's tough in the situation we're in. We're celebrities, dude. Yeah. You know, I mean, whether yeah. we like it or not. We're in the limelight. I mean, you got. And that gives them the right to tell us what to do. Well, I like I mean, that. That, that they feel that they, <laughs> yeah. they can, and then they're you know. I mean, let them do. I mean, they're fans, and they're oh, yeah. not fans. And not every like you said, not everybody's perfect. Not all our fans are perfect, you yeah, know. Right. But all I know is that there are fans, and, and you that's, know that's all there's to it. And, and and if you're a true fan, go out there, pay, support the bands. Go and out it, there. It, you know, if you want to talk about us, bad or good, just talk about us, man. It's all right, cause they. That means, you still, that means you still care. Yeah, we appreciate being in the conversation, <laughs> being in the engagement. You know, that's what it's all about, man. True. Especially in this day and age when social media and YouTube. So I mean, easy. There's a million bands. There's a million people you can be talking about. And you're talking about us or whether it's good or bad or anything like that. But we appreciate every single support, every single view, every single stream, everything you do for us. We appreciate it. Even the haters. You know, we appreciate the haters because they take the time to come on the show, yep. watch the show, talk their smack, shit post whatever, <laughs> yeah, and give us that view in the nat analytic. But you know what? We entertained you for that moment, yeah. whether you're mad about it or not. <laughs> you were entertained, that you were engaged, you were part of the show, man. That's you know, true. so true. we appreciate everybody, man. And that's I appreciate the way to do that. that. Yeah, dude, like that's that. the way it is nowadays. You have to think about and it. And one more last thing. Buddy says, hey, he misses everybody out there on stage. So soon you'll see Buddy again on stage. Right? <laughs> he's, he's out there sitting down wondering what's going on. Because he just celebrated a birthday. Aww. Yeah, he celebrated How a birthday. How old is Buddy now? He's six. He's six, six years old. old. Six times seven. What is 42. it? 42. 42. Yeah. Yeah. Chinga Chihuahuita y nosotros está cieguito, bro. Yeah. And then my pitbulls got osteoporosis or osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis. 
Oh, and then, uh, tires. yeah, and then we have a weenie dog whose <laughs> name is Willie. And this guy, is I see like, the steps right there, but you get on the couch. He's a <laughs> year and two, three months. And his uh, owner, well, the, the, the woman, the lady that she's my masseuse that sold them to me, she he has a twin brother named uh, Buddy. Mm-hmm. Oh. And so yeah. earlier, my, my wife, because she said, Do you want the other, the, his brother? Because we're gonna move and I can't take him with me, wow. and I told my wife, and my wife's like, and so when 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 I was waiting for you, she said, so are we gonna, uh, so are we gonna keep, uh, so are we gonna what? I said, so are we gonna get Buddy? I'm like, uh, what do you mean? No, I said I think we need to get Buddy. I think we need to get Buddy, and I said, what, what a Buddy? I thought it was your dog. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what are you talking about, Buddy? I don't know what you're talking about. Willie's brother. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about Hyman's dog. <laughs> And you, that's another coincidence right now because Darlene's already telling me, Buddy needs kids. Thank you so much for joining us here. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Dr. T's Primary Care for Men for Saturday Night Live. Hashtag PBT Saturday Night Party Live. We want to thank them. And uh, of course, uh, they've got testosterone. You want a healthy heart, healthy blood, less fat, more muscle, stronger bones, better verbal memory, uh, better libido, improved mood, uh, then you need some testosterone in your life. Also, they've got Sermorellin, which is a product that I personally use, increased lean body mass, fat reduction, improved energy, increased vitality, increased strength, increased endurance, accelerated wound healing, improved cardiovascular immune function, and better sleep. And the uh, improved cardiovascular and accelerated wound healing, when you're working out, you're tearing up your muscles, so your recovery is a lot faster. I'm also, no more. more. They've got IV vitamin therapy benefits as well. Boosts energy, helps with age management, reduces symptoms of migraines, helps to prevent illness, minimizes anxiety, improves athletic performance, helps with reversing symptoms of hangovers, and helps reversing age, which is number one. You want to look young, you want to be getting and improving your health and boosting your immune system, especially in this time and age when there's COVID, there's flu, there's all kinds of things, crazy yep. things going on. Well, then you need to visit Dr. T's Primary Care. Give them a call, 956 956- Four four one two one eight eight. Make an appointment today. If you're wondering, when you look at videos of me in, in, uh, interviewing Selena back in the day, and you look at videos of me now, all I've ever been told is, "Oh, you, to, you look a lot older back then." <laughs> well, the reason that I'm looking a lot better and a lot younger is because I visit Doctor T's Primary Care for Men. You all have a good one. We'll see you on Tuesday, Tuesday night live. With hashtag PVT. Thank you so much, Jaime. They are the one time that I'm on the Bye bye.